Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And yes, you could tell by the title of this video, today is uh, the infamous day of the uploading of my preliminary winter forecast 2019-2020. The title may be a little bit different, so that's just a disclaimer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been making these videos for the past four years. I'm going on my fourth year right now. And I'm telling you, there has been so much change in the weather community. There are so many more people wanting to watch these videos. When I first started, uh, obviously I had less views because I was a small channel but seriously a lot uh, more people are now watching these winter forecasts and winter outlooks so um, by popular request and by uh, but the popular views that I get on these forecasts I, uh, I welcome you to my preliminary winter forecast 2019-2020. I think there will be three in total that I'll make uh, two additional ones uh, throughout the coming months. But this is my first one. And uh, again, consider subscribing. Uh, this is uh, a channel about the weather if you're first. Uh, and I think there will be many people that are first uh, comers on this channel through this video. Uh, welcome, hello, and really consider do subscribing. Um, please consider subscribing. It really helps out a lot. So, um, And consider liking the video as well. Um, these are the things we'll be talking about. So we'll be talking about the Enzo outlook, which is basically the El Nino, La Nina, etc., the neutral pattern, and what's, you know, what's going on in the um, South American waters. <clears throat> we'll be also uh, mentioning the long-range models like the CFS, CPC, Climate Prediction Center, and the Jamstack. Uh, those are probably the least uh, thing, you know, the least, the smallest factor I take into these forecasts. So those long-range models really are basically rarely right. And that has been on previous experiences. I mean, I've already went through th four winters. And long-range models are often not right. Analogs, previous winters, those are usually very good ones. Uh, the, that's basically uh, taking a previous winter and comparing it to this year's winter, a characteristic from this year's summer, and comparing it to, you'll see in just a minute. But that's a very, uh, that's very accurate. Uh, maybe not accurate, but the most accurate out of uh, all of these uh factors and then uh, my preliminary forecast which is at that very end so if you want to just see that i guess you could skip ahead if you really want to but this is basically all my scientific uh backup as to why i'm making my claim and this video will probably be fairly long because it is uh, we have a lot of slides to get through so let's get into it right now we're looking at uh the past enso outlooks or the episodes and you can see we've been obviously the blue is a la nina the red is an el nino and in between is a neutral and if you don't know what this is at all i'll explain it in just a minute and i just wanted to show you that right now we're still in an el nino but we will most likely be going into a neutral if you look at this um enzo neutral is favored to emerge in the next season and then continue through the winter um i do think there's a slight chance of a la nina forming during this winter but as of now i will assume it is not because it's still far out and chances are very low it may increase later on but as of now again i am assuming that the chances for a la nina are extremely low and we're going with the neutral pattern and that's all you need to know out of this it's a neutral pattern so just remember that it's a neutral pattern um and what impact that has i'll explain in just a bit so these are basically the models again i just wanted to show you what they're showing most of them are showing a neutral pattern uh that is 68 percent of the forecasts uh, models are uh, are showing a neutral for a good chunk of fall and into winter it's uh could dip down into a la nina possibly but uh 95 percent of them are either showing a neutral or i would say like 85 are showing a neutral or possibly a weak a, a la nina or a weak el nino but again obviously the more further we go out in the future the more um, disagreement there is because it's longer in the range there's less confidence in between the models so now let's go further on to show you um uh what you know what this is so uh basically right now an el nino is present i already mentioned that but a neutral will uh is expected uh you can see an, a transition will be expected to a neutral pattern in the next month or two and most likely continue through northern hemisphere fall and winter um so uh now i finally want to explain to you what the ens so is enzo so um, you could see that uh, the ENSO 
is these waters off South America, right here. Don't focus, I know this is a big picture, I apologize, I should have cropped out more out of it, but it's just this little sliver of water um, that matters the most, but this whole area also is factored into Enzo, but I would say this is the most important region right here. In terms of uh, this year, last year, we were more looking at this whole thing because there's a chance of a Modokai, which includes these uh, waters up here, up there, and in the middle. But this year, I think it's more uh, easier to uh, identify. And you could see that uh, we have, and basically, the, the El Nino, the Enzo, is basically telling us whether these waters are above average or below average. And right now, you can see they're a little bit below average. So it's 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 a weak El Nino, but there I think it's more of like a neutral right now. But um, yeah, and, and uh, these are the anomalies. This isn't uh, the actual temperature. Obviously, you can see it's 1.6, one negative 1.6, and it's been a little bit cooling off for the past couple of weeks. And this would be indicative of a neutral pattern, and I think this is what it'll look like throughout much of, much of the winter. It'll be a transition between a possible El Nino, maybe it'll try going back to a La Nina, but then go back to an El Nino, or it'll just be an El Nino, very slow transition to a La Nina, and this winter will be a neutral pattern. And uh, neutral is 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 degrees, negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5 degrees in anomaly and change. And anything above that is El Nino, anything below that, uh, below that is La Nina. And you can see these are the different Nino regions. And again, uh, it's basically not going to matter this year because it's a neutral. So these regions aren't going to matter too much. These regions matter quite a bit when we're talking about an El Nino Modokai. That is basically when it's warm here, but cool here and cool here. So it's kind of like a weird combination of an El Nino and La Nina without it being neutral. Uh, but this year, neutral, it's going to be different. So... What do what, what do all these terms mean? What does a La Nina mean? What does a neutral mean? What does an El Nino mean for the U.S.? So, you can see this is what new what well, this is what a La Nina means, and there's there's again very low confidence as this will happen this year. But notice how the cold. Um, I'll try going through this quick quickly because we still have quite a bit of slides left. But notice how this cold um, cold air is more centered across Western Canada and the Northwest. And the Pacific jet stream or the subtropical jet stream is uh, more uh, getting into the northwest. And it does combine with this jet stream right here, uh, with the polar jet stream. And this could produce some big storms across the northeast and quite a bit of Alberta clippers. Because we could have one piece of energy coming from here that could produce snow for the Midwest. And another piece of energy that's most likely a rain producer. That's what we see usually with La Nina patterns. And uh, these two combine and they form large nor'easters where when sometimes this cold air... Uh, reaches down, but not too often. It's cold air, you know, it sometimes reaches down, sometimes doesn't. During a neutral pattern, this cold air is more prevalent in the U.S. If we were to look at the, uh, this is cut off, but it says end zone neutral winter pattern, you can see the cold is more centered across parts of the northeast and the midwest rather than, uh, rather than the west and the western Canada and the northwest. I still think that there will be plenty of cold for the northwest, uh, colder than average, actually, but uh, because this this is a vague pattern. I mean, in a, this jet stream would run something, let me draw this out, uh, something like this, and back down like that, and this would obviously, you know, indicate a ridge, so warm weather here, right? Well, Yes and no. This could, you know, this this jet stream varies. Sometimes it could end up going like this, cold air here. Sometimes it could end up going like this and warm air here and cold air. So this is just a rough outline, and each winter is different, even if it's a neutral or even if it's like a neutral between neutral winters. There's a lot of difference, but generally you could see, and the polar jet stream goes a little bit further south and is wet and warm. Air is uh, pushed down to the south, so we could see more storms still across the east, but maybe uh, towards the mid-Atlantic area, um, and in the southeast we could be seeing more snow with the neutral pattern. Um, if you were to go on now, I want to go on into the analog portion of this video. So you could see that with the analogs, this is a uh, March through May, let me explain. So this is March through May of this year. Um, basically what I wanted to do is find uh, springs that were historically cold, like this spring. I mean, you could see this was to this year's spring, March through May. It was chilly across the north, northeast, and possibly in parts of the northwest. And I wanted to find winters that were, or springs that were similar to this. And springs that were similar to this 
um, I wanted to, you know, find out what their winter was like. So you could see March through May 2019, I found similar win uh, springs and I compiled all of them together to form uh, this. Or sorry, uh, I'll first show you the March through May of each one. So this was March of this year. This was April and this was May. So you can see it was a pretty chilly spring. And then um, I, I compiled a bunch of years together to form uh, a similar pattern that was occurring this year. And you may be looking at this and being like, whoa, that's way colder than what we had this spring. Well, look at the scale. It's not that cold. The scale is different because it's so many years that uh, it's a lot, the increments are a lot smaller. And you can see the dark purple is negative 1.5, whereas this spring, um, the May, parts of May um, were uh, negative 4 degrees for parts of the country. And this is in uh, Celsius, so that's quite a bit of a difference. Um, not as, uh, you know, you may, it may even seem bigger than in Fahrenheit because Celsius is um, a bit larger unit of measure than Fahrenheit. And if we go uh, to see what March through May of all these springs combined that were chilly just like this past spring, we could see that November of all those years, you could see still the same thing, 2018, 2014, 2009, of all those springs. Look at the north, look at the November. Look at the correlation between the spring, a cold spring, and uh, a possible uh, cold winter because of that. You could see November is very chilly, and negative 1.5, negative 1, very, very, very chilly across many of these locations over so many years. Now we go to December, you could still see the same years, not as cold, a warmer December. That's kind of what we saw last year, and I think this year's winter will be similar to last year's winter in terms of the worst cold. I think it may come November, January, and February again, and December maybe not too cold, but that's that's just a speculation at this point. Also, um, I don't think that the winter will be similar in terms of the northeast not seeing a lot of snow. I think this year they will see quite a bit, but uh, I'll, I'll further explain in just a minute. But uh, you could see that the December of those years were also not alarmingly warm, or but uh, definitely a little bit warmer and the cool was less prevalent. But now we go to January of that winter that had the previous cold spring. You could see much chillier. Um, not as cold as November, but chillier than in December. February, you could see, was just brutal. Um, Notice how I have 2019 there because it was one of those years with this cold spring and I mean just brutal cold. This was and it's similar to what we just had last year where the cold is more west sent uh, uh, the, the cold trough of air is more centered on the western part rather than the eastern part but still plenty of cold in the east and then uh, you can see this is the whole uh, winter November through March. Um, I forgot to show you March specifically alone, but basically this is what the whole winter equaled out to. A cold spring usually in terms of just historical analogs usually means a cold winter and we did have a cold spring this year so you know we may have a cold winter just because of that. Um, that's just one factor though. Um, I'm quickly showing you right now the Jamstack. This is uh, a model, a Japanese model that is used in a long range and I really don't like long range models. I said that but I just wanted to include this in this uh, video for the people that do like the weather models. I did not really base my forecast off these models really too much because I felt like they did no justice as to um, the, the actual, you know, what will happen. And you can see that this was a model run, the Jamstack model run from June. It was showing chilly conditions across the eastern, uh, northern, central um, portions of the country, maybe a little bit warmer across the west. But uh, that was similar to what the analogs were showing, right? But then July run of this Jamstack, it shows completely something different. Um, and it's of the same time period, uh, December through, or yeah, December through February, but you could still see warm cool so it, they're very vital uh volatile and they change quite a bit and they're not really trustworthy so now for my outlook um this is what i think of uh, the temperature anomalies i think that anywhere you see this these numbers that is below average um that's below average and this is the only area that's above average i think so you could see i think the coldest will be here across the north as of now i do think that uh, north dakota minnesota six to eight degrees below average here four to six degrees below average northwest and the northeast two to four degrees below average and then uh parts of the south one to two here equal chances and could, this could still push a little bit further to the north and maybe not as cold as i put it on here but it may be even colder than i put on here um but these equal chances it could be above average in these areas or it could be below average and then i think i have fairly high confidence that these areas will be um, warmer than average and um, they not, not high confidence but I think 
it will be somewhere along the south. I don't know if it's these locations, but somewhere along the south, I think uh, it will be a little tad warmer. But that's not to say that the south will see less snow. Um, I think the southeast will see quite a bit of snow this year. Um, something just there's a lot of signs showing towards that. Um, uh, my uh, my in terms of snowfall, this is my outlook. You could see um, I did slightly above average for these locations. Um, across, you can see in a lighter blue, that's Carolinas, up the Tennessee Valley, Missouri, Ozarks, Kansas, and then parts of the nor northern Midwest. And I think the most will be across north, uh, the north east and that's due to the storm track that will be tracking across um colliding with that polar jet stream whether it's a la nina or a neutral i think there will be a good chance of several large storms producing quite a bit of snow across these parts of the um, country and i did above average for these locations uh i think the storm track will be fairly uh prominent as well across these areas producing quite a bit of snow and they could be um similar to what 2014 2015 was or 2013 2014 winter and then here i think it'll be a below average um snowfall if you know they don't get snowfall here at all but if they do i think it'll be if they you know if they average one or two inches i think it could be even less than that however all it takes is one snowstorm and a freak accident to put this above average so um i do think there will be an, a below average area somewhere along the southwest but i just don't think it will be the southeast um i should have extended this slightly above average to actually above average across the southeast but um you know that's how it is that's how it looks right now um it's still bound to change so don't base anything off this forecast too tremendously because this is not an official you know this isn't a this isn't a, a prophecy this is just a, a, a prediction and this is my official uh my official map and you can see uh this these are the highlights and what i think each area will be best known for so i think that you see in the purple right here i think little brutal attacks of cold air plus quite a bit of lake effect snow and that goes hand to hand as brutal cold comes across especially early on in the season across warm lakes the warm air rises collides with the cold condensation and then it snows lots lots of lake effect and that uh, i should have also included quite a bit of alberta clippers along this area um the northeast i think will be filled with blizzards and cold and then again some of that cold will spill into the northeast and the blizzards will come from or just snowstorms will come from the fact that uh it, all this moisture and these jet streams will collide and bring um perfect conditions for snowstorms i think that across the the the, the mid-atlantic to tennessee valley uh, it's kind of hard to describe this i think frequent cold plus uh snow um i think there will be se several big snow events that occur here um not obviously as much as up here or in the northeast but i think there will be definitely it will be cold below average um i do think that at this point i just don't think or i don't know as to what the degree of snow above average uh, depth will be and then in terms of uh the southeast you could see some big snows possible across this area even in the green there's some possible of some snow i'm not excluding that but i think it's going to be generally located for these areas and i think definitely some of these areas could see quite a bit of snow compared to their average across the south um the very south i said sweat some plus plus some snow possible um you know usually florida here doesn't get any snow but i'm talking about these areas possible some wet snow but um wet areas are just wet conditions in general from that jet stream subtropical jet stream riding up the northeast bringing plenty of rain as well um and you could see Texas possibly dry and hot, or I should have rather just said above average conditions for these areas. Again, this is not pinpointed. I think it will be somewhere along this area, but it could definitely still switch around. You could see average could change, however, for the for this uh, area right there. Um, I said average could change, however, because I think uh, the cold air may push down into these areas or the warm air might push up into these areas so this could um i just did average because this is kind of like my winter battle zone um it may be um warm above average or maybe an extremely cold winter depending on how things set up we don't know at this point and uh wet and maybe snowy for the mountains um i should have said very snowy for the mountains i think it will be fairly wet and i think there will be quite a bit of snow for the mountains um obviously because it doesn't take a lot of cold to be snowy in the mountains i mean it usually is cold enough to produce snow there without it being below average and also there is for the northwest cold plus snowy especially if la nina develops um i think even areas like seattle cities like seattle and portland could get some snow from that so uh thank you guys so much for watching consider liking this video consider subscribing to this channel this was a very long video i know i do apologize but i appreciate it for watching and i'll see you guys all on the next video thank you so much and see ya bye